guys. Hope you're doing well. So, almost done the book. Keep going here. Um, all right. So, the last part was super interesting. All right, so now. Basically, the last time the gunslinger showed him the universe and everything, and it was very uh, deep, and, and he passed out, and now um, he made a fire and passed out. Alright, so the gunslinger drowsed a while, and awoke to see the man in black regarding him avid, avidly, unhealthily. What are you staring at? An old saying of courts occurred to him. Did you see your sister's bum? I'm staring at you, of course. Well, don't. He poked up the fire, ruining the precision of the ideogram. I don't like it. He looked up to, to the east to see if there was the beginning of light, but this night went on and on. You see the light so soon. I was made for light. Ah, oh, so you were. And so impolite of me to forget that fact. Yet we have much to discuss yet, and you and I, for so has it been told to me by my king and master. <clears throat> Who is this king? The man in black smiled. Shall we tell the truth then, you and I? No more lies? I thought we had been. But the man in black persi persisted as if Roland hadn't spoken. Shall there be truth between us as two men? Not as friends, but as equals. There is an offer you will get rarely, Roland. Only equals speak the truth. That's my thought on it. Friends and lovers lie endlessly, caught in the web of regard. How tiresome. Well, I wouldn't want to tire you, so let us speak. The truth. He had never spoken less on this night. Start by telling me exactly what you mean by glamour. Why enchantment, gunslinger? My king's enchantment has prolonged this night and will prolong it until our palaver is done. How long will that be? Long, I can tell you, no better. I do not know myself. The man in black stood over the fire and the glowing embers made patterns on his face. Ask, I will tell you what I know. You have caught me, it is fair. I do not think you would. Yet your quest has only begun. Ask, it will lead us to business soon enough. Who is your king? I have never seen him, but you must. <clears throat> but before you meet him, you must first meet the ageless stranger. The man in black smiled spitelessly. You must slay him, gunslinger. Yeah, yet I think it is not what you wish to ask. If you've never seen your king and master, how do you know him? He comes to me in dreams, as a stripling. He came to me when I lived poor and unknown in the far land. A sheaf of centuries ago, he imbued me with my duty, promised me my reward. Although there were many errands in my youth, in the days of my manhood before my apotheosis, <clears throat> You are that apotheosis, gunslinger. You are my climax, he tittered. You see, someone has taken you seriously. <clears throat> and this stranger, does he have a name? Oh, he is named. And what is his name? Legion, the man in black said softly. Somewhere in the easterly darkness where the mountains lay, a rock slide punctuated his words. And a puma screamed like a woman. Gunslinger shivered and the man in black flinched. Yet I do not think this is what you wish to ask either. It is not your nature to think so far ahead. Gunslinger knew the question. It had gnawed him all this night. And he thought for years before. It trembled on his lips, but he didn't ask it, not yet. This stranger is a minion of the tower, like yourself. Yar, he darkles, he tinks, he is in all times, yet there is one greater than he. Who? 
Ask me no more, the man in black cried. His voice aspired to sternness and crumbled into beseechment. I know not. I do not wish to know. To speak of the things in end world is to speak of ruination of one's own soul. And beyond the ageless stranger is a tower, and whatever the tower contains. Yes, whispered the man in black, but none of these things are what you wish to ask. True. All right, the gunslinger said, and then asked the world's oldest question. Will I succeed? Will I win through? If I answer that question, quite gunslinger, you'd kill me. I ought to kill you. You'd need killing. His hands had dropped to the worn butts of his guns. Those do not open doors, gunslinger. Those only close them forever. Where must I go? Start eat west. Go to the sea where the world ends is where you must begin. There was a man who gave you advice, the man you bested of so long ago. Yes, court, gunslinger interrupted impatiently. The advice has to wait. It was bad advice. For even then, my plans against your father had proceeded. He sent you away, and when you returned, I not heard you speak of that, the gunslinger said, and in his mind he heard his mother singing, Baby bunting, baby dear, baby bring your basket here. Then he heard this. When you returned, Martin had gone west to join the rebels, so all said anyway, and so you believed. Yet he and certain witch left you a trap and you fell into it good boy although martin was long gone by then there was a man who sometimes made you think of him was there not men who affected the dress of a monk and the shaven head of a penitent walter the gunslinger whispered and although he had come so far in his musings the bald truth still amazed him you martin never left at all the man in black tittered at your service. I have to kill you now. That would hardly be fair. Besides, all that was long ago. Now comes the time of sharing. You never left, the gunslinger repeated, stunned. You only changed. Sit, the man in black invited. I'll tell you stories as many as you could hear. Your own stories, I think, will be much longer. I don't talk to myself, the gunslinger muttered. Yet tonight you must, <clears throat> so that we may understand. <clears throat> understand what? My purpose? You know that. To find the tower is my purpose. I'm sworn. Not your purpose, gunslinger. Your mind. Your slow, prodding, tenacious mind. There has never been one quite like it in all the history of the world. Perhaps in the history of creation. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> this is the time of speaking this is the time of his histories then speak the man in black shook the volume in his arms of his robe a foil wrapped package fell out of and caught the dying embers in many reflective folds tobacco gunslinger you smoke he had been able to resist the rabbit but he could not resist this he opened a foil with eager fingers there was fine crumbled tobacco inside, green leaves to wrap it in, amazingly moist. He had not seen such tobacco for ten years. He rolled two cigarettes and bit the ends of each to release the flavor. He offered one to the man in black, who took it. Each of them took a burning twig from the fire. The gunslinger lit his cigarette and drew the aromatic smoke deep into his lungs, closing his eyes to concentrate the senses. He blew out with long, slow satisfaction. Is it good? The man in black inquired. Yes, very good. Enjoy it. Maybe the last smoke for, for you in a very long time. The gunslinger took this impassively. Very well, the man in black said. To begin then... You must understand the tower has always been, and there have always been boys who know of it and lust for it, more than power or riches or women, boys who look for the doors that lead to it. 
There was a talk then, a night's worth of talk, and God alone knew how much more or how much was true, but the gunslinger remembered little of it later, and to his oddly practical mind little, little of it seemed to matter. The man in black told him again that he must go to the sea, which lay no more than twenty easy miles to the west, and there he would be invested with the power of drawing. But that's not exactly right either, the man in black said, pitching a cigarette into the remains of the campfire. No one wants to invest you with the power of any kind, gunslinger. It is simply in you, and I am compelled to tell you, partly because of the sacrifice of the boy, and partly because it is the law, the natural law of things. Water must run downhill, and you must be told. You will draw three, I understand, but I don't really care. And I don't really want to know. The three, the gunslinger murmured, thinking of Oracle. And then the fun begins. But by then, I'll be long gone. Goodbye, gunslinger. My part is done now. The chain is still in your hands. Where it doesn't wrap itself around your neck. Compelled by something outside of him, Roland said, You have one more thing to say, don't you? Yes, the man in black said, and he smiled at the gunslinger with his depthless eyes, stretched one of his hands out towards him. Let there be light. And there was light, and at this time, the light was good. Hmm. Okay. Okay, well, there's one last chapter. But then, I don't know what this is. Pro it's a prologue. Alright, last chapter here. Roland awoke by the ruins of the campfire <clears throat> to find himself ten years older. <clears throat> His black hair had thinned at the temples and there had gone the gray of the cobwebs at the end of autumn. The lines in his face were deeper, his skin rougher. The remains of the wood he had carried had turned to something like stone, and the man in black was a laughing skeleton in rotting black robe, more bones in his place of bones, one more skull in, in this Golgotha. Or is it really you, he thought? I have my doubts, Walter Odim, I have my th doubts, Martin, that was. He stood up, looked around. And then with a sudden quick gesture, he reached towards the remains of his companion of the night before. It was indeed the remains of Walter. A night that had somehow lasted ten years. He broke off the grinning jawbone and jammed it clearly into the left pocket of his jeans. A fitting enough replacement for the one lost under the mountains. How many lies did you tell me, he asked. Many, he was sure. But... What made them good lies was that they had been mixed with the truth. <clears throat> the tower, somewhere ahead, it waited for him. The nexus of time. The nexus of size. He began west again, his back set against the sunrise, heading towards the ocean, realizing that a great passage of his life had come and gone. I loved you, Jake, he said aloud. The stiffness wore out of his body and he began to walk more rapidly. By that evening, he had come to the end of the land. He sat on a beach which stretched left and right forever, deserted. The waves beat endlessly against the shore, pounding and pounding. Setting sun painted the water in a wide strip of fool's gold. There the gunslinger sat, his face turned up into the fading light. He dreamed his dreams and watched the stars c came out. His purpose did not flag, nor did his heart falter. <clears throat> his hair, finer now and gray at the temples, blew around his head, and the sandalwood inlaid guns on his father's lace. And the sandalwood inlaid guns of his father lay smooth and deadly against his hips. He was lonely, but did not find loneliness in any way a bad or ignoble thing. The dark came down, and the world moved on. The gunslinger waited for the time of the drawing, 
and dreamed his long dreams of the dark tower to which he would some day come at, at dusk and approach, winding his horn to do some unimaginable final, unimaginable final battle. Hmm. And we'll have to do the prologue next time. It's pretty big, I think it's, yeah, it's a good amount. on the book pretty good hope you guys enjoyed again helps a lot if you can subscribe and uh, just really motivates me to keep going